This diet is proven to stop kidney disease progression even in the advanced stages, and science confirms that. Catherine here, welcome to a very, very important video, the very low protein diet. This dietary approach, which is criminally underrated in the US, could literally prolong the life of your kidneys by 10 years or more if implemented correctly. Today, I want to show you how to do this from a practical point of view. We will see exactly what to eat, what to avoid, and what to supplement. We are also going to see the easiest way in the world to calculate protein, potassium, and other nutrients. Yes, there is an app for that, so don't miss even a second of this video. Very important question. Is the very low protein diet really proven to stop kidney disease? The very low protein diet, and I'm putting the emphasis on very here, or VLPD from now on, is used to treat the advanced stages pre-dialysis kidney disease. It is proven to work by a large review of studies published in the Cochrane Library. Researchers and many doctors firmly believe that it can basically stop the progression of the disease even in the advanced stages. This is a diet that will remove the greatest burden for the kidneys in existence, protein. It's not a secret that a plant-based diet is the best way in the world to protect the kidneys and slow down kidney disease progression. And that's because plant-based foods are not rich in protein and they pack a punch when it comes to nutrition. Yet, we can still go one step further removing protein from the diet. This is what the VLPD is all about, and this would, in turn, completely stop the progression of CKD. Actually, the aim of this is not just to stop the progression of CKD and live longer, it's also to decrease the symptoms and greatly improve your quality of life. Proteinuria, uric acid levels, but also nausea, itching, can all be greatly reduced with this diet. The VLPD is the most common diet for CKD in Europe, so there is enough data today to be 100% sure that it works. Guys, I don't want to talk too much about studies and research today because, well, I've already done that in my video up here. I've discussed the most commonly asked questions about the VLPD, such as, is the VLPD really proven to work? And why hasn't my doctor prescribed this diet to me? And more. What you need to know, in short, is that low-protein and very low-protein diets continue to be more readily used in Europe and minimally used in the US. It's not impossible to find a competent nutritionist, though, even in the US. Also, anyone with kidney disease in stage 3, 4, and 5 pre-dialysis can benefit from a VLPD. What I want to show you today is a practical approach to the VLPD. There will be examples, there will be foods to eat and foods to avoid and more. I've also found a very interesting app for your phone that I want to show you. This is a 100% free app that will let you input all the foods you eat and that will show you exactly how much protein, carbs and fats you're getting, but also potassium, phosphorus and a lot of other things. More about this in the next part of the video. Now, let's see immediately what someone on a VLPD would eat in a day. I know that this looks almost like a regular plant-based diet, but there are differences. Actually, if you are following a plant-based diet, congratulations, you are already following a low-protein diet. But what we want to achieve here is a very low-protein diet, which is different. Now guys, I will never tell you to start eating like this all on your own. This kind of dietary therapy always need the help of a doctor. Let's take a look now. We can see breakfast, lunch, dinner. There are even snacks. All without exceeding a protein limit of 20 grams a day. So there are four things I want to highlight here. First how much protein and calories you will be getting and why. Second, what foods to eat. Third, what to avoid. And also, what are low-protein foods such as pasta, bread, crackers. 
So let's start with protein quantity. Clearly, there is pretty much no protein in these meals. As we can see in this example, the aim is to get less than 20 grams of protein per day. So protein amount is the difference between a low protein diet and very low protein diet. I know that many of you guys are already following a low protein diet. They are usually around 40 grams of protein per day. But according to literature, there is a lot of difference in terms of progression of kidney disease between a low and a very low protein diet. Low protein can help. Very low protein can stop kidney disease. So, what foods are always allowed in a VLPD? All vegetables and fruits suitable for a renal diet will fit in a VLPD. They don't contain protein. The exception is legumes, nuts, and seeds. These do contain some protein. They can be had, but in very small amounts. High-fat foods such as vegetable and olive oils, but also olives, flax seeds, chia seeds are very recommended. Someone with potassium levels under control may add avocado and coconut, two very healthy fat sources, to their diet. In some cases, even low-sodium dressings and mayonnaise may be acceptable. What foods should you always avoid in a VLPD? High-protein foods are to be avoided completely in a VLPD. This includes any kind of meat and fish, but also eggs and dairy are to be completely removed. Nuts and seeds are a gray area, as we have seen, because they are lower in protein and richer in healthy fats than meat and fish. How to tell how much nuts and seeds can you feed in a diet that requires 20 grams of protein? There is an app for that. More about this in a moment. Before that, what about low protein pasta, bread, and biscuits? Low protein food items are now available even in the US and many other countries. We have been using these food items in Italy for decades now. They're true and tested. Low protein foods are zero or very low protein alternative to pasta, flour, cookies, bread, and more. Like many foods, pasta contains some protein. Not as much as meat, for example, but if you eat pasta frequently, protein will add up quickly. This is why these products exist. They are especially developed for people with kidney problems, so they're also gonna be low on potassium, phosphorus, and sodium. Actually, some brands also fortify them with the vitamins you need, but not all of them. Talking about brands, these products are pretty easy to find almost anywhere in the world. This brand is called Aperten. Some websites in the US, Canada, and Australia carry it. Another brand is called Flavis. This one actually ships only in the US. This brand is called Laprofit and ships in Australia and New Zealand. Now, very important. There is a supplement you absolutely need to take to make this diet work. Keto analogs of amino acids. Very low protein diets are always coupled with some keto analogs supplementation. The reason is malnutrition. Because while your kidneys really suffer from breaking down protein into amino acids, your body really needs amino acids. Amino acids are the building block of all the tissue inside your body. Keto analogs of amino acids are nitrogen-free analogs of essential amino acids. Nitrogen-free is the key here. Nitrogen is the part of protein that's actually putting all the burden on the kidneys and making CKD progress. So, to get the benefits of a low protein diet and avoid malnutrition, you can use these special amino acids. Now guys, there are three brands of keto analogs available today. Ketosterol, a calcium-based keto analog. It was created from Fresenius, a well-known dialysis company and requires a prescription to be sold. 
Then there is Albutrix, a magnesium-based keto analog product that comes in tablet form. Keto Rena, a calcium-based keto analog sold in both powder and tablet form. Keto Rena is made in the US and doesn't require a prescription. It's the cheapest of the bunch, but it's recommended to choose the different keto analog based on calcium levels of your most recent blood test. In short, the very low protein diet works based on the notion that the kidneys are damaged by protein. Once you remove protein from the diet almost completely, the kidneys will improve. A very low protein diet is not something you can self-prescribe though. It requires very precise calculations and a special supplementation. And while the help of a good nephrologist and a specialized dietitian are almost a requirement, you can still do a lot by yourself with the right tools. Yes, there is a free app for that! I mean, these days it looks like that if you need to do anything in your life, there's a nap for that. And calculating macros in a renal diet definitely is one of those things a nap can make easier. I've tested and researched various macros tracking apps. Nutritionix, MyFitnessPal, Chronometer, Lucid and more. They all do a similar job. They all let you track with a sufficient approximation your macronutrients. The two I can recommend you to try are MyFitnessPal and Chronometer. The way they work is very easy. You can input any food you want as breakfast, lunch, dinner and so on. And the app will tell you exactly how much protein but also phosphorus, potassium, sodium, etc. you will be getting. Also, you can set daily goals for these nutrients, which is very useful. Both these apps are free and can be used on Android, iPhone, and even on a PC via web browser. Now guys, if you want to know more about what foods are perfectly safe and suitable for a low protein diet, there is a video up here just for that. A new video is coming this Sunday and I bet you're gonna like it. In the meantime, keep taking good care of your kidneys and be good to yourself. This is all for today. Thank you for watching. Bye!